Hey everyone, my name is Rabia and I'm a cloud advocate for Microsoft 365. This is a multi-part video series. I have my uh, HR and Betty Rose here with me to discuss about Microsoft Graph Explorer. Aicha, who are you? <laughs> Hi everyone, my name is Aicha Bush. I'm a cloud advocate at Microsoft. And uh, today we have also a special guest, Betty Rose joining us from Graph Explorer. Betty, why don't you introduce yourself? Hi everyone, so my name is Betty Rose Ngoge. I am a PM in the Microsoft Graph DevX team and I own Graph Explorer. All right, so I guess in one of, of our videos, previous videos, we did talk about how we're fetching data from Microsoft 365. And not every day we're getting data with just one response, maybe just my name or email. We might be getting data, like tons of data, like hundreds and thousands of data from Microsoft 365. And in the Explorer, I have not seen any button um, or any paging that can, you know, take me through all these, uh, this huge amount of data. So how does it work in Explorer, Betty? Can you explain uh, a bit on that? So that's a very good question. So we are going to go to Graph Explorer and run this query. And this query returns a lot of responses that paging is required. So there's a lot of paging in these the responses. And one of the things that you're going to notice, Graph Explorer ask, actually tells you this response contains an auditor property, auditor.next link. So click here to follow, to follow the link. So every time you click on that link, it takes you to the next page. Um, mm. And, and on the last page, it actually tells you all data. There's an all data dot delta link. And if you click, you can follow the link um, from this space here. OK, that's interesting. And that's how we handle paging in Graph Explorer. And you're able to tell you, um, you're able to tell you um, that there's an all data dot next link or all data the delta link and give you a link that you can follow. Right. So this is the last space that it tells you it's all data delta link. So every Correct. time there's a next one, it means there is still data coming in. Oh, that's really clever. Correct. So Betty, I also see here there uh, there's a cuts in the pit piece. Um, mm -hmm. What if, let's say, I learn everything about Graph using Graph Explorer, and the next part for me is to um, embed exactly the same thing in my own code, in my own app. Is that where we get the code for the query and copy-paste into our own app? Correct. So the code snippets tab um, gives you code snippets for every query that you run on your Graph Explorer. So if you wanted to run to add this query into your application, for example, in C Sharp, this is the code that you'd actually use. And we have a copy button over here, which you can click and copy into your application. We give you code snippets in four different programming languages, C Sharp, JavaScript, Java, and objective C. So this query changes for every single uh, mm -hmm. graph call we do. Let's say if right now I'm getting data for me, but if I change it, if I get, let's say my email or my manager, then query will automatically change and it will be adapted to new graph call, right? Correct. Correct. So depending on the query that I am looking at, the, the code snippet is changing. So if I'm looking at my mail, you will get a new code snippet. If I look at um, all the items in my drive, the code snippet also changes. Items trending around me, the code snippet also changes. Wow, that's mm. great. I see this is not the only thing uh, here, right? Next to code snippets, I see toolkit component, which is one of my favorite feature of uh, Microsoft Graph. Um, maybe some of the developers already know Microsoft Graph toolkit is a collection of components, uh, web components and authentication providers that help us build Microsoft Graph in our apps quickly and easily. Uh, I see we also have an integration in the Graph Explorer to learn more about the toolkit, I assume, right, Betty? 
Yes, correct. So one of the things we've done with Graph Explorer is give you libraries that make your development process easier. And we have two libraries that we have integrated in Graph Explorer. One of them is the toolkit component and the other one is the adaptive cards. So every time you run a query and there's a toolkit component or adaptive card component that is available, a blue dot will appear next to that tab telling you, please look at that tab. There's something for you that you can you can have a look at. And so in this case, um, I ran the work me uh, query and it actually has a toolkit component, it takes a bit to load, um, but once it loads, it will show you um, how this should appear um, in, in your toolkit. Same case for adaptive cards as well. So if you go to the adaptive cards tab, it's going to show you how this query, the response would look like in adaptive card and also show you the JSON template that we actually used. So these are two libraries or UI libraries that enable you um, to implement your UI easily without having to re redefine or redesign like the wheel, yeah. That's pretty cute because I, I always wonder what that blue dot meant. And now it's a bit clear to me that it means that there are something that I need to look into and, you know, make my life easier. Um, mm -hmm. So um, I guess adaptive cards are there for mainly just to show, you know, hey, you could uh, put this data in this way and present it in your applications, just like quick tips, right, basically. Correct. Cool. Um, what about themes? Is there anything else you can do with the UI um, of uh, Explorer? I'm just curious now. Yes, there are so many things you can do. One of the things that you can do is change your theme. Say I want to see, <laughs> for example. So if I do that um, and my whole application just changes to a dark theme, say I wanted right. like a high contrast one, for example, and if I go here, I'll just change to high contrast um, and it should it should change the application to high contrast. So that's one of the things you can do with the UI. If the sidebar component is too huge for you and you'd want to hide it, this button over here at the very top enables you to collapse it and um, expand it as you wish. Also, um, if you want, if the response that you got here is too long and you don't want to see it on a broader view, you can actually come here and expand over here and it will open a bigger space so that now you can look at your response. Wow. Uh, yeah. So cool. This yeah. is so cool. All my life I have been using this tool wrong. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that's a bit of what you can do with the UI. Right, right. So, so oh, 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 oh. So this is an interesting one. So can you go back to the ellipsis um, again, uh, Betty? Mm -hmm. Report an issue. So, oh, okay. This is probably uh, one of the features we need to highlight, right? So this there is an option for developers to go report an issue to make our product better. So could you explain a bit on that one? So where does it go? Like a repository or? Yeah, so if you if you are using Graph Explorer and you run into an issue or you actually have a feature request, there's something you'd want to see on Graph Explorer. So this button should be your friend. So if you mm -hmm. click on this button, it takes you to our GitHub repo where you can go in and either file a bug report, a feature request, or tell us about a security vulnerability that you mm. came across. Yeah, and so you can create one of these and we are going to get it, charge it, and start working on it. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, that's really good, especially the feature request. I'm pretty sure devs who have been using this actively, they do have ideas around how to improve. So this is really great. Correct. So. 
Well, another thing, I don't know you, Rabia, but usually when I'm um, finding some interesting things in the Graph Explorer, it's not only mm -hmm. uh, coming from the sample queries, but I also uh, customize queries by using some filters. Uh, I play with the data a lot. And at the yeah. end, uh, since I'm playing with the sample data, I like sharing my own query. I think one of the best features available in the Graph Explorer is you can share what you build with your colleagues. Um, just, you know, you can click the share button and then they can see what sample data you're getting um, and they can understand what, what you are talking about. This is great because it's not only about copy paste the query, but also they can experience the same data sample. I think this mm. is one of the best features available in the Graph Explorer for developers. Correct. Right. Yeah, and also as part of sharing the query, if you had something on your request body and your request headers, it actually goes with a shared query. So the person you're sharing with will get exactly the query that you are looking at, plus the response, yeah. That's cool. But if it's in a different tenant, then it might be different. So if you're in the same tenant, dev tenant, you know, multiple developers working in the same tenant, it's going to give you the exact data. Is that what you mean by that? Or Yeah, that's correct. Cool. That's really awesome. So the, the last thing I, would, I wanted to showcase is uh, sometimes you'd want to get your own demo tenant and in this case um so that you can do all the queries and when you get your own demo tenant you will have also admin access so some of the permissions that we discussed and said requires admin uh, consent you'll actually have an admin account and also a user account if you do want a demo tenant to start your development journey uh, on graph explorer we have this link that tells you you can go and get a sandbox with sample data and once you click on it it takes you to the m365 developer program that gives you a full tenant with if uh, E3 uh, Microsoft um, 365 um, license that is free for development purposes only, um, and you can keep renewing it every, I think it's every 90 days or every year. Yeah. Yeah. And if you keep using it, developing apps in it, then I think you get it, un, you know, indefinitely renewed, yes. I guess. Yes. Forever. Yes. Correct. Yep. Awesome. That was a lot of features. And to be honest with you, there are many things that I had no idea before us recording this. So that's that's simply great. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. There are so many more like the access token. So if you wanted to see the access token, you can sign in and actually see the access token that you're um, working with. Um, the more yeah. five it is we have permissions in two places the modify permissions tab and these more actions once you're logged in you will also see the select permissions yeah thank you everyone for watching so these are the features you have in the microsoft graph explorer if you've got any question or feedback around this web tool please do uh, let us know using the report and issue uh, button in the explorer itself so Enjoy. Thank you so much, Aja and Betty, for joining the call. Thank you. Bye-bye.